Carmen and Corona. Great opera with an orchestra, soloists and a choir in the time of the pandemic. The Staatstheater in Cottbus is taking quite a risk. But what about the audience? We have to protect people, but also art. Even if we have to sing like this, it's better than not singing at all. Starting from the overture, we'll run through the whole piece, cutting wherever choruses and singers in question are not here. So let's begin. November. Mario Venzago takes up the baton. As we're so scaled down, let's reduce the percussion, make it more subtle. When the rehearsals began, Germany was under a semi-lockdown. Businesses were open, schools as well. But the theatres were closed. Rehearsals were allowed, though, of a corona version of Georges Bizet's opera, Carmen. The orchestra for it is only half the usual size. Nicht laufen. The soloists don't wear masks but they sing from behind plexiglass to prevent transmission of the virus. Singing is thought to be especially infectious. Thank you. Careful, Verena. Everything is a bit too heavy, especially for 10 in the morning. Try a lighter version, OK? The singer cast for the role of Carmen is prevented from traveling by the coronavirus. So here, the understudy sings her arias of love and passion, subject to the current hygiene regulations. The theater does all it can to ensure rehearsals can go on. This is an air purifier. I don't know what the professionals call it. This purifies the air so we can sing with less risk, without wearing masks. We mostly rehearse with masks on anyway. And we don't know yet for sure how it'll be when we eventually sing on the stage with masks on. We won't have the purifier but we can get ourselves tested before the performance. It doesn't solve the problem, it's just an extra precaution. We'll be working with masks and distancing anyway. But we don't know which passages we'll be doing yet. It's a terrible situation, and I travel a lot. Yes, of course I'm afraid, and I protect myself the best I can and I get tested as often as I can. But it weighs on your soul. It weighs like a black dog on your soul. But why are they even subjecting themselves to all this? The theater was still closed. But at this time, the performers were still hoping they'd be able to play to an audience in December. Super, super. They had no intention of being upstaged by the virus. Fortunately, I already had corona a few months ago. My doctors say I've still got the antibodies, but of course you always have to be careful. But I know what you go through with this virus. How was it for you? Awful. I'm still tired. At least she's got her voice back. The orchestra is relatively small. Some of the instruments have the potential to blow the virus into the air, while others don't. 
The brass players pose the least danger because we blow in here and the air goes through two meters of tubes before it comes out back here. No aerosols come out. Experts have tested this and confirmed that the brass players are the cleanest members of the orchestra. The real problem is with the singers. They really project out. An entirely different kind of problem is that many of the orchestra members at the subsidized Staatstheater Korpus are under contract, but others are not. They're freelance musicians, many of whom haven't performed in months. If the government and the theatres don't support those freelance performers, we might just wind up living under a bridge by the time the pandemic's over. We won't be around because we have to survive somehow. If you want to keep having opera, you're going to have to help us now. The theatre managers in Cottbus know that too. The whispered doubts have now become loud voices of concern. I don't believe it'll end up going on stage anyway, to be honest. But you never know what's coming. How does it make you feel when you say the production might not make it on stage in this form? We're used to tossing out our plans from one day to the next and making new ones. We learn pieces that might never be performed or will get done differently. It's an enormous challenge. But make no mistake, this is an occupational therapy. Every time we are completely committed to the concept, only for it to be overturned by events. So we're all seasoned by all this upheaval, adapting ourselves, our imaginations, to something different every time, and still believing in it. A few hours afterwards came the next setback. The entire opera choir was supposed to rehearse together, but the latest figures for new infections are alarming. The choir had to be cancelled for today. It puts Mario Venzago and director Stefan Merki in a difficult situation. As the figures rise, so do the individual fears and questions we have to deal with on a daily basis. I take those fears quite seriously, and I believe we should take them seriously, because it's hard to rehearse with fear. That's why we said, OK, not today. Tomorrow we'll discuss how we can deal with it. Instead of the choir, they rehearse Carmen's part by itself. Very tenderly. Otherwise, it'll be too trivial. Embrace death, musically. Death wears a mask. It's the only way the dancer Winston Ricardo Arnon can bring Carmen under his spell. Now the choreography is set, but the big question remains. When's the premiere? Well, that's a really difficult question. Two weeks later, they're ready for a dress rehearsal. The singer cast in the role of Carmen has finally been able to make the trip. But the audience has not. With cases of COVID-19 rising in Cottbus, the lockdown was extended and the theatres remain closed. It's up to the theatres to make things happen because there's no shortage of reasons not to do something in these corona times. If all goes well, they can hold a real premiere once the pandemic's over, whenever that may be. Even in the face of all these uncertainties, they're giving it their all.
This is the job we have to do for our musicians, our singers, for the entire theater and everyone involved so they can perform to the best of their ability and with the greatest dedication. This may be one of the most important jobs in my life. Eventually, they even rehearse with the choir to help calm the singer's fears the director didn't stand them shoulder to shoulder on the stage, but well-spaced throughout the gallery. One letdown, of course, is that we're not allowed to dance. We can't put the choreography on the stage the way they worked it out. I feel like an expectant mother waiting for her baby to arrive, but not allowed to give birth. Carmen and her lover, Don Jose, will never even get to that point. In this opera about love and passion, the hygiene regulations prohibit so much as a light kiss. It may be heartless, but at least it's healthful. Carmen doesn't die of the pandemic, but of a crime of passion at a distance. Mario, do you have anything? Yeah. Yes, I think you've all set an example for how to make music in spite of it all, and above it all, and much more. I thank you for it, and wish you all the best, and most importantly, that you stay healthy. Thank you so much.